I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today I'm so excited to be talking about the fantastic series Girls 5 Ever. I am joined today by the wonderful cast members Sarah Bareilles, Renee Elise Goldsbury, Busy Phillips, Paul Appel, and creator and showrunner Meredith Scardino. And Meredith, starting with you, I love the way that you create this fascinating journey of success and what it means in very different ways, because with this season, it starts with the tangible career goal of we're wanting to play Radio City, we want to sell it out, and it actually becomes something about a personal journey instead and learning maybe we don't need to chase the big time, maybe the middle time is the best. So I was just interested in the writer's room, how you set out to do that. Well, I mean, I, I think I sort of believe in that as, as uh, like a guiding light in life. Like I, I sort of like, I like being like a little under the radar and doing my thing and like having fun and feeling a little bit like an underdog. I f always feel like I'm, I love the feeling of feeling like you're pulling something off, which is sort of like constantly working, constantly making without too many eyeballs. Like, not, not that I don't want this, I want this show to blow up and be the biggest show like ever. But I like, I like the, I like staying nimble. I like working hard. I like working all the time. And I think that that sort of is, does feel like the recipe of what it feels like to be like a working, artist, actor, you know, uh, singer, whatever. And so it felt like something that they should know is maybe where they should be, you know, whether or not they'll be able to resist, like, fame coming their way. and The shiny object. The shiny object. And, and can they stay normal mm. when they're presented with that, which, <laughs> I mean, I think is a hard and an uphill battle, but at least they have each other. Um, but, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, and Sarah, for you, I've heard you say in the past that with Dawn, you feel like she shifts a little bit when she's in the music because it's this place of not only escapism, but a place that she can kind of process the world around her and particularly the things that she struggles to vocalize in her every day. So when you're performing moments where she's writing or she's performing, what are those kind of minute changes that you always want to make in the character? I think it is so, it's a lot of fun to encounter Dawn in this place where she does feel a little bit of conflict between who she is in her real life and who she gets to become inside of this group. And I think that's really relatable. I mean, certainly in my life, you know, to sort of toggle between who you are professionally and who you are personally, I think that there's a real distance to cross in that. And I think we get to see her in judgment of the people they used to be, you know, like all of these, mm -hmm. <laughs> all of these women, you know, they really came through a kind of a dark period yes. for women. Oh, yeah. And yes. so when they look back and they have to, uh, you know, sort of embrace <laughs> what was ridiculous and not judge it and let themselves have been flawed and, and moving in their lives, I think that's part of what's powerful about this season in particular and for Dawn, you know, she lets herself love it at the end. And I think that's what's so, it's so fun to watch her let go and just enjoy it for the pure joy of it. There's also a thing that like personally I have experienced having done a lot of things when I was a teenager that like I felt conflicted about because mm -hmm. of my own experience going through it at the time, filming those things and knowing what was happening to me as a young woman and the kinds of things that were being said to me. And now as a 44 year old person who gets the joy of people coming up to me and quoting lines from projects and telling me how much it meant to them growing up or how impact, how it's the way that their mom and the, the t quality time that they spent with their parents, mm. it reframes the whole thing for me because I am okay. I'm a, I'm a good, like I'm okay now as a person and a woman. Yeah. It turned I out. Turns out I, I, I'm doing okay guys. And, and so it allows me the freedom of like replacing whatever like grossness was in mm -hmm. the late nineties and early two thousands for me as a young woman with like this thing I was a part of, these things I had been a part of really meant something to people. And that's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, so I love cool. those details. And Renee, in talking about your performance, there's so much at play in terms of what you're doing because you're playing a character that's so much larger than life, and yet you ground it so much in terms of where does this all stem from? 
stem from? Like, what is the need for this projection in life? And what are her insecurities? What are her fears? What's her vulnerability? Um, and I was just interested in how you approach playing a character that has such big swings between those two very different spaces. <laughs> it's so, it's really great because um, I guess they always say about playing comedy, you have to, you have to really understand what's real and be grounded in something and it's really easy to do that with Wiki because it's so clear to me. I, I understand I am her in so many ways. I, 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 truly, truly I am her in that I, I, no, in that I spent so much of my life, here, here's how I'm not her. I didn't have one big hit, right? I'm not, I, I, I didn't have that wonder. I mean, I definitely had some successes in my life. But when I think about that time in that era, I was, I was this person trying to make it, trying to get anything going, throwing everything against the wall, and I didn't have the success that she had. Um, and I wasn't even aware until we did the show of some of the forces that were working against me. I wasn't even aware of them. And, um, but I did spend a tremendous amount of time in my 20s trying to grapple with the idea that it wasn't going to happen for me. Mm. I spent a lot of time trying to be like, okay, who am I if everything they always told me is not true mm -hmm. and it's not gonna happen? Mm -hmm. and, and can I be of value in this world if this gift I have doesn't have some great platform that everyone else recognizes. Um, and I just spent a lot of time in that space, and so when I look at Wiki and I understand, I see the bad behavior and I'm like, I kind of get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I kind of get it. And so, um, you know, a lot is her fault, but a lot of it is something that we all struggle with, and I'm, I'm grateful that I, I get to live through the writing of this brilliant woman and with these other brilliant women, I get to live her second chance. Well, the beauty, third chance. The and beauty her of fourth the, chance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> chance. I was going to say the beauty of the series and all these characters are they are those people that you said you were, which is and I am. Like, I still am. Will I ever yeah. be that? And uh, so that's that tender part of us where we're like, oh my god, could this be? I mean, the, there's so many moments in the show where we get to have that moment of. Is this our miracle? Is this yeah. our incredible miracle in our in our careers, in our lives? Like, can we finally do this thing? And and uh, it it keeps it alive because you just keep coming back to it. It's hope. It's called hope. I mean, it's also <laughs> such like art imitating life that we oh have, yeah like, a comeback on Netflix. Like have, yes, yes, it's amazing. It's yes, <laughs> it's amazing. And, and busy for you with summer, um, you know, I remember season two, you're talking a little bit about how you like to kind of gradually strip away a lot of those elements in terms of who she always felt she had to project herself to be mm -hmm. and the veneer that exists on the outside. Um, and so with this season in particular, because she's going on such a continued journey of self growth, what were the ways in which you wanted to strip away some of that exterior to the inside a little bit more? Yeah, well, I think that Meredith and the writers have done such an incredible job of all of us um, in terms of really following and tracking our character arcs and the fact that these are multi-layered women and it's super relatable to me to reach a point where Summer is at this moment in her life and she has to take stock of all of the things that she's thought that she, the decisions she has thought she's made by herself and realizing that maybe she's made some decisions based on other people influencing her heavily and maybe she hasn't made some decisions at all mm -hmm. and so she has this really kind of incredible journey especially this season of discovering who she is actually and what she actually wants to do and what she's good at and trusting herself which is as a woman of a certain age especially a thing that I think I, I know is relatable, I just know is relatable because that, that part of ourselves oftentimes gets dismissed, especially if you look a certain way or if you talk a certain way that maybe you don't actually know what is best for yourself and Summer gets through this season to really is empowered in making her own decisions and trusting her gut, mm. which is the best. I love that. And similarly for you, Paula, I mean, 
Gloria really didn't get the chance to be herself with the first time around with the band, and I love how much joy she takes, not just in authentically being able to be herself when they succeed, but also even if it's a failure, she's enjoying it because she's getting to do it her way. Um, and did you find that there was not just a lot of emotion that you could mine within that, but also a lot of comedy that you can find because she's very much turning every experience up to 11 because it's the first time that she's experienced things oh, that yeah. way. Oh, yeah, I mean, she's playing catch up for sure. You know, Gloria's like, I didn't, and I, I did it myself. I was, you know, closeted for a very long time. Well into my 20 years at SNL, I was closeted for a good deal of the first third of that and or half of that, I can't even remember. But you know, you, you do, you start feeling like you're playing catch up in life once you hit a truth. And once you tell people your truth, it's like, okay, now here, now I get to live this. And this is why, you know, this is when I get to, to really experience it. And because she you know, was closeted, then she was with someone who became her wife, and then she got divorced, and, and that was all an era where it was probably kind of quiet. You know, I, I myself, my first marriage, I had to go to another state to get married and went to a jewelry store to look at rings, and everyone was staring at us, and it was just a different era. So I just love that she's she's trying to fast forward everything to get to a place where she can really live her life and say like, okay, so I have this person I know I love, but like before, cause she's the only one I've ever been with. So, and I deserve to know whether I really want this person or, or I'm going to go for something else like cigar mommy. Cause right. I, <laughs> I go for a lot of different kind of ladies in this season and, and I try them out. I'm not going to tell you how it turns out. There's 178. 178 types of women on a spreadsheet. I love it. You know, and, and with that idea of, of when they have moments of success, I love the way that in the show they succeed the most when they're compatible and when they're working together and their failures come when they fall apart and there's distance between them oh, that's so good, and I was yeah. interested in kind of the space that allows you all to play within it's like you know we know when there's unity that we can propel forward and when there's not that it's going to pull them two steps backwards. Thanks. That's called great writing. Yeah. <laughs> but there is such a, like, I mean, I think it's such a reflection of how great this cast is together. That you, like, when they're all together and uh, on screen, you just feel this, like, wonderful comfort slash, like, you're laughing. There's just, like, something, There's they have such chemistry together that I think that's also... Mm. Feel, like why it feels like they're having such wins when they are working together, you know, because they just, they've made all of these characters feel like 3D people. They all, we all have empathy for every woman who has gone through the pop machine. And also it's really just an, like, uh, that's a more hyperbolic, um, like, lens to, to talk about what it's like to just be a woman. Be yeah. A woman. Um, and that's yeah. really what this show is. So much every um, profession, I think Busy yeah. was saying it, it's like every profession that women have tried to achieve in has gone through that, that same lens. Yeah. And in terms of, of the comedic tone of the show, it kind of feels like the gift of going into a third season of this is that you can push it further because the higher the personal stakes are, the more comedic tension you can create around that. So how have you found spaces in this season where you feel like you've been able to push the, the comedy to even higher places? Well, I will, I'll just say, like, as, you know, writer and, and working with the writers on the show, like, they're... <laughs> We're almost trying to find like what you guys can't do. <laughs> so it's like it's fun to just be like, oh, we could. I mean, it, it, the, what's coming to mind right now is something from season two, just like Paula, just beating the shit out of a property brother. And you're just like, like uh -huh. going into this series, would I have ever in a million years thought that that would happen? <laughs> no, I mean maybe like if you told me, ah, maybe we get there somehow. But going in, never in a million years. And I just think we're all very open. Um, the writers, um, we're all very open to kind of feeling where these characters lead us on the next chapter of every journey for for this group. Like season one, reuniting. Season two, what's their album? What does that suggest? Season three, what does the road suggest? And just like get taking everything and then being surprised by some of the, you know, ideas that come out based on, you know, what it's like to be on the road and, mm -hmm. and yeah. And they always are just like jumping. They, 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 they just jump in two feet. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> when 
we are presented with the gift of painting our faces green. <laughs> you know, or or scatting or, you know, the, the kind of the kind of backflips she did, you know, nine months pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's it kind of makes you feel like what can't we do together? And um, I love this group in particular because um, not only are they getting a second chance, they're not waiting for someone to give it to them. They're like, they, they, the writers continue to have us take it for ourselves. Yeah. Like no yeah. one is offering us anything. If we don't like what we're offered, we we're take, like, let's do it ourselves. Yeah, let's do That's it what ourselves. I love let's, so much let's, that there's pivots. Beg, borrow, and steal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that that's that also inspires me greatly, and um, I think there's a lot of inspiration in the show for people that are not women, and not mm -hmm. the term I don't love actually so much of a certain age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean at any age, um, people that are not also women, people that are not also in pop music can find inspiration, hope, and most importantly, so much laughter in the show, yeah. and good songs, yeah. <laughs> and filth. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. I love everything that you've created in this show, and especially the season building on the first two. So congratulations on thank an amazing you. season. And thank, thank you. Thank you so much. much.